Hello and welcome to System Verilog in 5 minutes. Today we'll talk about program and scheduling semantics. This is a simple design module. It has input clock, input A and output B. It passes the value from A to B on every positive edge of clock. This is a top module. It has a clock and wires A and B. And here it instantiates the design module. This is a test module. It is used to drive stimulus into the design and monitor its output. And this is a basic test bench. Now, first thing first, program. You can use a program to write test. It is very similar to a module. However, a program is not synthesizable. You can use initial block in the program, but you cannot use always block. If you want, you can use forever syntax as a replacement. Program is used to differentiate a test from a design module. Of course, you can still use a module, but it has some problems. Let's try to visualize the system. A clock generator provides clock to both the design and the test. The test uses it to send stimulus to the design. Supposedly, the design will see exactly what the test sends. But if we treat them as real components, the test takes time to send the data. So there will be a slight output delay. And it takes time for the data to travel from test to design. So the design will see an even larger delay. Even though this is the clock when the data is sent, the design will only see it in the next clock. In this clock, the design outputs the data back to the test, and the same thing happens again, but in an opposite direction. Now coming back to the code, do you think it models the behavior correctly? The answer is not really. When the clock comes, three assignments need to be performed. The simulator does it one at a time, but it doesn't really know which one to go first. It can randomly assign one to A first, then A to B, then B to R. Then the result of R will get the value 1 as the same clock as A getting 1, which is not the behavior of the real hardware. And this is why to model data transfer between components, it is recommended to use non-blocking assignments because they are performed concurrently. A is assigned to 1 and at the same time, B is assigned to A right before A changes to a new value. R is assigned to B right before B changes to a new value. And this is a more accurate modeling. However, if for some reasons we are not using non-blocking assignments, there is another way to improve predictability, which is to use program block for test. To understand the behavior, we need to go about how simulator performs the assignment. The simulator will walk one time step at a time. Let's say the time step is 1 nanosecond. This is the simulation wave for the first 10 nanoseconds. Let's start at time 0. There is nothing to do here, so it moves to the next nanosecond. There is nothing to do here as well, so it moves to the next one, until it arrives at the 5th nanosecond. Here the clock will be toggled, and following that, these assignments need to be performed. Now let's look into what will actually happen. At every time step, the simulator goes through several stages. And this is an overly simplified diagram of the stages, which is known as scheduling semantics. Preponed, active, non-blocking assignment, NBA, observed, reactive, reactive NBA and postpone. Every stage is meant for a certain kind of assignment. I will not go through all. The active stage is for blocking assignments in the module. The NBA stage is for non-blocking, but we don't have any here. The reactive stage is for blocking assignments in the program. Now back to the wave for these three assignments. This one is in active region and these two are in the reactive region. So active region is done first. B gets the value of A. There is no change of value from 0 to 0. I'm showing a change here to indicate this 0 comes from A and not from the old value of B. After that, the reactive region is executed. A is driven to new value 1 and R is driven to B. Similarly, there is no change of value here. I'm showing a change here to indicate this 0 comes from B and not from the old value of R. The simulation will go on and on in this manner. You can see that when a program sends data to a module with a clock, the module will not see it immediately. It will only see it at the next clock. This is expected behavior of a component sending data. On the other hand, whenever a module sends a data to a program with a clock, the program will see it immediately. This allows a test to get up-to-date values from the design. If, however, we are using module for the test, all assignments would be in active regions, and the simulator can choose whichever to execute first. That may lead to incorrect behavior modeling. Today we've looked at program block and scheduling semantics, next we'll look into assertion property.